Steve Duco is one of those apologists who thinks that physics somehow implies the existence of God. This is his debate with Aaron Ra, in which Aaron explains why he thinks the universe can both be finite in the past and eternal. I would say that if we have a, um, an expansion of the universe and the details or the data that we see is accurate, then we have an origin of the universe that seems to match a, uh, a um, Cartesian coordinate system wherein you have a time represented by an asymptote where one second equals infinity when t equals zero. In this interpretation, since time begins with the Big Bang, what you would have is simultaneously an origin and an eternity in one. This is pretty technical, but what Aaron is saying here is that if you were to go back in time, the rate at which time passes would get slower and slower, approaching zero, like an asymptote, until you reach the Big Bang, when the rate of the passage of time would have been infinitesimal. The reason this may be the case is because of relativity. The closer you are to a dense, massive object, the slower the rate at which time affects you. Since, if you went backward in time, space would contract, making the total mass in the universe denser and denser, time must pass more and more slowly slowly the earlier into the past you go. This would mean that the universe has existed for a finite amount of time in one sense, but also has existed eternally in another sense. The amount of time in the past is finite, but at the earliest moments time passed at an infinitesimally low rate. So if time were to run backwards, the universe would eternally get closer and closer to the Big Bang without ever reaching it. Aaron Ra is not a physicist, and neither am I, so I don't know if this idea is correct, but it seems to make sense. So of all the matter and energy into the, in the universe right now, according to the known laws of physics, if there is no God, the no God scenario, that means all of this matter and energy would have had to have existed for all time, or it would have had to have come into existence at some point. And the problem is neither, neither one of those two scenarios, neither one of those two scenarios are possible according to the known laws of physics in the no God scenario. So I would argue by process of elimination, the God scenario then therefore must be considered more plausible. Your response. How the fuck would it be impossible for matter and energy to exist for all time? What law of physics forbids that? You say that what I'm believing in is some magical genie who says abracadabra and things come into existence. Uh, mm -hmm. And of course you're referring to my belief in God. Uh, I believe that there is an entity that exists in the universe that operates outside of the laws of physics that does not have to obey those laws of physics and therefore is capable of violating them and creating matter and energy from nothing, okay? At first, Duco says that naturalistic explanations of the existence of matter and energy are impossible because they violate the laws of physics. Then he says that God is a better explanation because God violates the laws of physics. This is obviously special pleading. He holds God to be a special exception to the law of conservation of energy. You can convert energy into matter and vice versa, but you cannot create it out of nothing. The mere fact that it does exist now is, in fact, imperative data. We have scientific data showing that we have a three-dimensional universe consisting of energy and mass. It is here. So it got here somehow. Non-fucking sequitur. The fact that it is here does not indicate that it got here. It could exist non-contingently. If the law of conservation of energy is true and energy cannot be created, I think it's pretty reasonable to infer that it never was created. 